Welcome to this uh, virtual tour of IVSS 2020. I am uh, Amedeo Manuelo Bertetto from the Politecnico di Torino and uh, I am one on the, of the four uh, co-organizers, main organizers of the first Italian workshop on space and spatial structures. Today uh, I am uh, um, on this place uh, um, place of meanings where uh, I wanted um, to take you uh, if the conference uh, will be done in Turin. The Turin Exhibition Center was conceived in the years immediately following World War II as a public exhibition space to host primarily the annual automobile show in connection with the presence in Turin of the international renowned Fiat Motor Company, as well as other major events. The center houses some iconic shell and spatial structure concrete architecture by Pierluigi Nervi and Riccardo Morandi. They consist in three big exhibition pavilions, perfectly representing the structural art of these famous protagonists of contemporary engineering and architecture. And now let me introduce uh, uh, the principal investigator of the, of the project Keep It Modern, Professor Rosario Ceravolo, and Dr. Erika Lenticchia, one of the team leaders of this project. Thanks for your interest. Uh... Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. For this reason, the co-organizers and me decided uh, to show the magnificent work of the architect and the Italian engineer Pierluigi Nervi, taking the opportunity of this virtual tour. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Erika Lenticchio of the Politecnico di Torino, as uh, Amedeo already introduced me. And uh, since uh, you couldn't come here, we decided to show you the beautiful halls uh, and structure designed and built by Pierluigi Nervi in Torino in another way. Currently, we are located uh, in the Valentino Park. The Valentino Park is a very important historical park for the city of Torino. And the complex is located uh, in the middle of it. It's very close uh, to the Valentino Castle, the original venue of this Congress, uh, but you couldn't come, of course, but uh, uh, the Valentino Castle is a UNESCO uh, site. So, uh, Nervi built the Turin Exhibition Center, the halls of the Turin Exhibition Center, uh, in 1948. Uh, however, uh, he didn't build the two holes starting from zero. In fact, uh, previously on the same ground, uh, it was located another palace, another complex. The complex uh, was called Palazzo della Moda and was built in the 30s by Ettore Sottas, uh, a very famous Italian architect. Unfortunately, uh, the Palazzo della Moda, who was used as an exhibition center, uh, was also used during the Second World War as a, as a stock for weapons for the war, and the Allies bombed it, so it was uh, partially destroyed. Uh, after, immediately after the Second World War, uh, the Fiat Motor Company decided to uh, renovate completely the complex and started a huge renovation plan uh, for reconstruct the exhibition center. And so they called uh, Pierluigi Nervi and Bartoli to redesign the complex. So as I told you, Nervi didn't start from zero. However, he had to work on a already designed master plan from uh, Biscaretti di Ruffia, 
who was the head engineer of the Fiat Motor Company. Um, in this case, Nervi and Bartoli had a huge area to cover, as we can see, and they started with the whole B. This one we are staying here inside, and it is also known as Salone Agnelli, uh, in honor to the founder of the Fiat Motor Company. So Pierluigi Nervi and Bartoli had to work on the already designed master plan by Roberto Biscaretti di Ruffio. The construction phase of the site work lasted just nine months. However, since the Fiat Motor Company wanted an expansion of the exhibition spaces, there was a second enlargement of this hall between the 1952 and the 1944 54. I will talk about it later on. Hall B was conceived like a cathedral and it consists of a nave covered by an undulated vault in ferrocement and of an apse with a merispherical ribbed half dome. In the first configuration, Hall B measured 96 meters in width and 75 meters in length, 110 meters counting the apse, with enlargement between 1952 and 1954, Hall B was enlarged by five spans in order to move the facade on the street. In the current configuration, the hall reached the length of about 155 meters. For the construction of the building, Nervi had to face a series of construction problems, which were quite difficult to solve by using traditional building system. First of all, the time allowed was less than 10 months. Moreover, he had to face um, a large amount of cost cuts. Moreover, as we already said, the building dimension were huge. And uh, moreover, since it was an exhibition space, it required uh, a lot of lights. So, in order to overcome all the issues related to the construction site, Nervi decided to employ a new construction system that uh, he, after, after the construction of the whole B, even patented. And uh, he employed a lot of uh, new technical solution and material solution, such as the uh, employment of uh, ferrocemento, and uh, prefabricated elements. Moreover, the whole B presents a lot of original structural elements. First of all, the hubs. The SAP barrel vault, which is a patent very typical of the time in Italy, which consists of a reinforced concrete slab uh, with the lightened by masonry hollow blocks. This element connects the ribbed half dome to the rest of the hole. The undulated ball with the ferrocent elements, the fanned elements in precast ferrocement, the slanted pillar in reinforced concrete, and the slabs. Here we can see the detail of one undulated element in ferrocemento of the cylindrical vault, and then some picture of the construction site. This two photo instead shows the configuration of the whole B before and after its enlargement at the beginning of the 50s. This enlargement demonstrated the strength of the nervous system and how uh, its design could be enlarged thanks to the modularity of the system. The following video shows the demolition of the original facade. Unica, 
Questi operai e queste fiamme ossidriche staccano dal corpo dell'edificio l'attuale facciata. I tondini sono recisi, il calcestruzzo sbriciolato. Il gigante sta per tornare polvere. Some of these elements are very clear in this uh, portion of the building. We can see a lot of them all in the same frame. Here we can see the typical ribbed domes that Nervi had already started to use in other buildings in the past. But here he developed the construction system uh, of uh, the Tavelloni, ferro Tavelloni in Ferrocemento uh, in this uh, first solution. This is the first uh, example in a large scale building that Nervi, in which Nervi employed this uh, construction system. Right, good morning, I'm uh, Rosario Cerano, the Polytechnic of Torino. Uh, last year we were awarded this important uh, 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 grant. Uh, it is uh, a grant in, this, in the line uh, keeping it modern of the prestigious uh, Getty Foundation. Actually, we had been working uh, on these uh, beautiful halls uh, for uh, several years uh, together with uh, Dr. Lenticchia and uh, then we decided to ask for uh, this kind of grant, uh, uh, which uh, actually it is uh, about uh, the seismic and structural protection as well as monitoring of this important structure. Then uh, the proposal was extended also to restoration and conservation and in fact we uh, formed a very uh, international group uh, constituted of uh, experts like engineers, uh, architects, uh, conservators uh, and uh, uh, so on. The project uh, uh, presently is articulated in four lines. Uh, the first one is more on uh, structural seismic issues uh, as well as monitoring because uh, one important part of this project is on monitoring. Uh, the second one is about durability. There is a team uh, that includes also some experts, uh, uh, some international experts uh, about ferrocement uh, and durability of ferrocement. And we are going to build some mock-ups uh, in the laboratory to test uh, durability. The third one is about conservation, documentation and survey. And the fourth is about uh, uh, dissemination. Uh, we've started uh, the research last year. Now we are planning some uh, initial experimental activities. Uh, for instance, some dynamic tests, but not only. And uh, in the near future, we hope, uh, unfortunately, there has been an interruption due to uh, the pandemic, but uh, on, uh, Septem in September, we hope to start uh, with uh, the most uh, experimental part of this, uh, of this research. The research started from a seismic assessment of the structure. And in fact, uh, this is a very important part of our project because uh, in the future in Italy, as we are in a seismic uh, country, in order to exploit, to use these buildings, it will be very important to uh, take care of the seismic aspects uh, about the uh, enhancement of these structures. Uh, but uh, I will uh, cover this matter in a more specific uh, speech during uh, the Congress. And so I will present some slides for you. Of, uh, they will be interested also in this matter. Thank you. Now we will proceed in going to the next hall, which was realized by Pierluigi Nervi two years later than this one. It is called Hall C. Let's go. Yeah, this is the gallery that links 
the whole B and the expansion, the whole C. That is right here behind this wall. resemble a lot the hangar that he built uh, previously to the Second World War in Orvieto and Orbetello. It has the same ribbed pavilion vault. So he designed these pavilion vaults in order that he rests on four inclined arches. These arches are inclined following the shape and the static force flow of the pavilion vault. But as you can see, it's not a perfect combination, but it's like, slightly different. Uh, this uh, did, this, uh, did uh, this decision because he uh, had uh, a perimetric uh, undulated slab in ferrocement that he patented after the construction of this wall. And here we can see this undulated pyramidal slab, these are all ferrocement beams that are very, very thin, and the span is about uh, 9 meters. Please notice the lightness effect of this uh, magnificent building. On the contrary, from the seismic point of view, there are at least two problems. The first is the weight, the mass of the arches. The arches tend to interact during a possible earthquake between each other, giving rise to pounding, for instance, and uh, they govern actually the behavior of this building. There is another pro problem, the other problem is the discontinuity between the cap and the arches. You see that some of the, uh, of the these uh, peri the perimetral uh, elements, uh, which are not uh, in, in field, without in fields, uh, be between there could be a problem of soft story uh, due to the different behavior uh, between the cap itself uh, and uh, this uh, part which is softer. Uh, another aspect uh, that should be considered is uh, the effect of uh, non-structural elements because uh, the structure has a different behavior uh, depending if you consider the, the non-structural behavior of the infield walls or if you consider the naked structure. Well. Thank you very much for, for watching uh, the virtual tour from Torino Esposizioni for IUSS 2020. And thank you to Professor Rosario Cerado and Dr. Lentini. Thank you so much and we hope to see you in the online section of the Congress. Bye! We hope to see you in Turin the next time. Mm -hmm.